Hello everybody and welcome back to Matt, well not welcome back, welcome to the new series of Mass Effect 2. I'm so excited. This is my favorite one of the series and due in large part because my favorite romance of all time, including Dragon Age romances, is in this game. So, um, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> and I decided to start from the launcher. Uh, I don't quite remember how fast it jumps into the game so uh, I'm hoping <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've integrated the uploading of the Mass Effect one like each game into the subsequent next one but we shall see and also I'm ready to cry because I probably don't get all my bonuses that I should have gotten from finishing all the minerals and stuff in Mass Effect one but you'll live and learn and I'll probably forget about this in the future <laughs> I might switch to a mouse and keyboard, and I'm also tempted to play, um, look at that, look at that. I actually have a poster of that very image. Um, but I am tempted to put it down on hard, also. No, I don't, no, don't, I thought I had that disabled, prank. Um, I thought I had the origin overlay disabled, but here we are. Eek. This game also has the best soundtrack. Oh my gosh. Okay. Import. Mass <gasps> I mean, that's technically the level I would have gotten to if I was using the old system. And that's the only one. It's gotta be it. <laughs> So that's cool. So uh, in the old Mass Effect system, they kind of, like the old Mass Effect 1 system, they went up to level 60. Um, and there was an achievement for getting to level 50, and there was, an, which most people could kind of do by the end of the game if you did a lot of the side quests, but level 60 was, I think, impossible to do unless you played uh, Save Game Plus. So, um, we've lost a lot of those achievements, <laughs> but here we are. Combat, we'll do... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There's four. Difficulty is already being Mass Effect 2 on a bigger challenge. They're extremely tough. React quickly. <sighs> oh, let's try on hardcore. I might go down to... I might go down to veteran if it drives me up a wall because... I was like, oh, I'm going to do Insanity all the way through, but I should maybe play the games. <laughs> oh, I should maybe play them more before I do that. <laughs> like, more recently. Subtitles on. Squad powers, yes. Squads can use their powers. Oh, I hope I edit out that coughing fit. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Thank. Thank God. Paragon. Rex survived. Council was saved. Council seat. Uh, that's us. It's pretty gnarly if you choose to save, to not save the council, honestly. That's a pretty interesting one. Oh, this game. I'm so excited. Shepard did everything right. More than we could have hoped for. Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still, it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. But they're sending her to fight Geth. Geth? We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers her hair. are still out her there. Her hair changed a little. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help, even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard, they'll follow her. She's a hero, a bloody icon. You say that. But she's just one woman. But they don't. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose her. You, you say that, but they don't listen to me. <laughs> they don't. They don't. 
and this is unique. It, it it's it's actually quite different if you don't save the council. This this whole thing, how it's all playing out. Officially, they blame the invasion on the Geth. Yeah, that's the thing. Is at this point, they're like, that is the thing. <laughs> at this point, they are. Um, they're kind of stepping back on the Reaper thing now that things have died down a bit and they're like less immediate, you know? They're like, oh, that was just one ship being controlled by Saren and the Geth. And it's like, no! You idiots! And so now, Disengaging now they have us on cleanup. Oh my gosh! Sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. It's so shiny. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found oh any my sign gosh. of death activity. They're so shiny. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. <laughs> this is like the gnarliest intro Cruiser is changing course. for any game. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly. It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers. Presley. Oh. Everyone's dying. Multiple hull breaches! Weapons offline! Somebody get that fire out! There's nobody left. Everyone's dead. can't you know what I mean like he is my second in command he has to do this that 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 whole head nod right there to me is just like like she's like uh everybody in go like go, she's go. she knows she's essentially sending herself to die and uh and she's not gonna ever see Caden again probably at least that's you know potentially Like that that's their separation as like lovers is you have to go now and I have to go this way because I'm the commander and you're my lieutenant despite everything else like this is what this is what we have you know oh this this intro gives me so much stress also don't think I didn't see Bioware that you mayday 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 this is SSP Normandy my ship <gasps> My baby! <gasps> We've suffered heavy damage from an unknown enemy! My baby! Also, they tried to give her the... Hold together. Hold together. They tried to give her the default um, setting. I saw the hair. They gave me the default shepherd. They didn't take... Because you have to do that later. Anyway, this is my freaking... Command center. We've got, like, talk about hull breaches. The entire midsection of the ship's just open to space. I, I actually cried, honestly. This this tore this tore me apart. I I have an I have an insane attachment <laughs> to the ship. Come on, Joker. We have to get out of here. No, I won't abandon the Normandy. I can still save her. The Normandy's lost. Going down with the ship won't change that. Yeah, okay. Help me up. They're coming around for another attack! Nah! My baby! Watch the arm! Ah, 
his bones break really easily. <laughs> get to slowly suffocate. I don't even get to die, you know. Like, I'm slowly, probably, innards freezing. And I'm suffocating. And I'm gonna impact a planet. And that's the start. That's the beginning. <laughs> I actually did stop playing this game for a while when this intro happened because I was so angry <laughs> at what they did to my ship. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. I have all the Normandy models. I love. I love them. I love it. Would I like to review? Sure. This doesn't usually happen. This is, must be new. Just another routine mission. Why do they always say that before a mission? Of course it's routine. You haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way. The choices you make. The paths you choose. That turn the routine into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission. Answering a distress call. And look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy. Captain Anderson's new ship when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Alenko. A good kid, loyal, by the book, with a talent for biology. A good kid, really? We came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. A soldier to the core, tough, disciplined, Ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. A ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive. Scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted her away. Her lips aren't that big. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact. A beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Lieutenant Alenko made the mistake of getting too close. I hit him with some type of energy. I grabbed him and threw him out of the way. That's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. I could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Udina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat. As was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian Spectre named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime, and there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Udina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite specters could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof, which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another tourist, wanted to isn't help. Garrus isn't green. A top agent for Citadel security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. Doesn't look like that. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest-looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. 
He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led us to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Saren. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little <laughs> energetic tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime. And the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace that they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions, but not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat, but they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I'd need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. That better be Caden, not supposed to be me. A Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, daughter of Benezia. Saren's top lieutenant. That's actually less important. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species, Liara was able to help me decipher some of the vision the beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. What? Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected. But not at all unpleasant. That's weird. That's weird. Caden was a little concerned about the connection. Oh, yeah! Uh, <laughs> as commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere with the mission. <laughs> what? I told Caden I wasn't interested in Liara. I had my eyes on someone else. But we agreed we wouldn't let it get in the way of our mission. Finding This Sarah. is more in-depth than I thought. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead. But I've never yet. seen this. Saren had taken her to Novaria, where he'd enslaved the queen of a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Benezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni queen. The queen's drones were everywhere, and they were not happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Benezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone, with the information. I tried to reason with Benezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Venezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. That looks very awkward. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with no, her. No, I, I had to with kill them Saren's all. top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer. What about... But we soon learned it was more than a base what of What about the other planet we went to? It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed. Violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, that these Krogan weren't real. But he wouldn't back down. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. That's so... what? He realized this wasn't the way to help his people. And that Saren was the real That's threat. really not nice. When we finally got and to the center of the base... I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. But Krogan don't look dumb. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship, was a Reaper. It spoke to me, threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. 
I split my team into two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke, and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign, the Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control. Said he'd found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence. But he was kidding himself. Or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran. Leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried. But it wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Ash was a good friend. And a great soldier. But I had to choose. And I chose Caden. Oh. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, one of us would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. But Caden saw through my words. He knew I was hurting after Ash's death. He could sense my doubts. We both knew this mission could be our last. Until that moment, we put our feelings aside for the sake of the mission. But why wait? We gave in to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and it was perfect. While it lasted. Her voice is amazing. We arrived on Ilos close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago, and every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died like every species before them, but a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space. Slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers, once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space. Bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact. Wow. <laughs> he had caught the Council fleets by surprise and they were Look only now regrouping. <laughs> Sovereign is his flagship. There was little hope that the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. Comics are so dramatic. Saren was done running, and I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Council fleets battled Saren's army outside the Citadel, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. No, no he didn't. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, I talked him down. Attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our human alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council had to be saved. They represented the hearts and minds of the galactic community. Without them, the fleets would be in disarray. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet. The battle against Sovereign a single reaper was relentless it took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races but in the end sovereign fell but the costs were immense while humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the council it was a hollow victory the reapers were still out there i knew the fight was far from over but as the one who'd led the fight against saren i was given new responsibilities the choice of humanity's first counselor was left to me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, the lifetime politician. Ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be placed before him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier. Tough but fair, but a friend and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. Anderson didn't want the job which was a sure sign he'd be perfect for it. 
No ambition to get in the That's way. That's one way to look at it. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the Council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned cleanup duty. Routing out any remnants of Saren's army. Just another routine mission. My baby! My shit! I've never actually seen the Genesis thing, but that's cool. I always thought it was for people who, you know, just didn't play Mass Effect 1 and wanted to hop into Mass Effect 2. That's what it originally was for. It was like a playable, um... Commander Shepard has, has been recovered. Playable comic, sort of, that lets you... The Lazarus Project will proceed as planned. The Lazarus Project, um... But yeah, no, it let you make the decisions from Mass Effect 1. That's me. And then you, yeah, you wouldn't have to play Mass Effect 1. You could just hop right into Mass Effect 2. But since I've always played Mass Effect 1, it's never been an issue for me. And also, they didn't used to just auto-play that. That's kind of cool. Well, they gave you the option, but it wasn't an option before. So that was cool. I like that. Hey, I'm alive again, or am I? Am I me? <laughs> Yay! Now it's my real, except imported face. This is the this is the the default appearance, and this is the one that they that they had me put my helmet on at the beginning, and I I saw that Bauer. <laughs> but this is they had to obviously let you make your own decisions, so. But usually you couldn't see the hair, but the high definition got in the way. Ah, the tra it transported so well. And yes, we're playing Vanguard. Yes! This is the game Vanguard is the best in. Biotic charge, pull, and shockwave. Shotgun, heavy pistol, submachine gun, incendiary cryo. Oh, I'm gonna punch people with my face. I'm so excited. War hero. I try to make sure everything's correct. <laughs> yep. Oh, it it came over so well. I usually I have to make some modifications, but not in the legendary edition. Hey, on the monitor. Something's wrong. She's reacting to outside stimuli, showing an awareness of her surroundings. Oh my God, Miranda! I think she's waking up. Damn it, Watson. She's not ready yet. Give her the sedative. Shepard, don't try to move. Just lie still. Try to stay calm. Do I have skin? Still climbing. Brain activity is off the charts. Stats pushing into the red zone. It's not working. Another dog. Now. Heart rate dropping. Stats falling back into normal range. <laughs> Too close. We almost lost her. I told you your estimates were off. Run the numbers again. Space mom? Question mark? <laughs> Wake up, Commander. Look at my eye. Oh, look at my face. I look pretty rough. Do you hear me? Get out of that bed now. This facility is under attack. Shepard, your scars aren't healed, but I need you to get moving. This facility is under attack. Oh, my makeup looks terrible. Why is there a pistol in here? It's a medical facility. Grab the pistol and armor from the locker. Uh, you don't have time to wait around. Uh, Grab your weapon and armor. Oh, it's mine. This pistol doesn't have a thermal clip. It's a med bay. We'll get you a clip from. Damn it! Those canisters by the door are going to blow. Get behind uh, cover now. Keep your head down, Shepard. Shield yourself from the blast. Someone's hacking security trying to kill you. Look for a thermal clip for your pistol. Hey, look at that. Well, uh, anyway. <laughs> With that exciting, uh, jump into the- Oh, look, I do have some resources. Oh, and I have some credits. Excellent. 
Palladium, Iridium, Platinum, Element Zero. Just you guys wait till we get to the funnest part of the game, the mining mini game. <laughs> uh, no, I'm glad though. I pro I think I could get more if I had like actually like completed it on time. I don't know. Anyway, I'll double check. Actually, I'm interested. But uh, thank you all for watching this and watching the Genesis thing with me. I appreciate it. That was cool. So. Oh, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons. Welcome patrons to Mass Effect 2, and thank you so much for your support. I want to give an extra special shout out to Scalamunger, who is a sapling tier patron. Thank you so much, and a special shout out, as people are dying in the background, to Rescalito. Thank you so much for also being a sapling tier patron. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, who is a tree tier patron and would not be hacking security to kill me. Uh, they'd be hacking security to help me get out of this place and and figure out what's going on so thank you so much for that and uh thank you all for watching and i hope to see you in the next one